نحمده ونسلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شأن حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم بارك على سيدنا ولان محمد تب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبسار وديائها وعلى آله وسحبه دائما أبدا سلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله uh, correction from last week, um, you know, after Juma I announced that today, tomorrow, and Sunday would be the 13th, 14th, and 15th. The correction is that actually it's tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday. So the 15th is Monday. So the recommended days of fasting are the 13th, 14th, and 15th, which is Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Uh, of course, if somebody fasted today as well, you know, it was, you know, I was about to reward them even more, inshallah. Um, but you know, the night of the 15th, which is the night between Sunday and Monday, uh, is known as Laylatul Bara or Laylatul Nif uh, Nif Shaban. So the 15th night of Shaban, uh, and Shaban is the month of Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam, and it's a blessed month. And so the blessed month has a blessed night within it, and one of the auspicious things about this night is that this is the night in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distributes the budget to the angels. So that the, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to the angels what they will be doing over the next year. Uh, and so basically Qadr is handed out. Uh, and so this is why it's important for us to be making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because qismat or fate can be changed by dua even though that change is also within the knowledge of Allah. And there are many stories related to this that we could talk about, but I'm not going to go into those. Uh, because the main purpose of all of these nights, you know, these special nights, whether it's Laylatul Bara or Laylatul Qadr or, or any other special night, you know, the nights of Rajab uh, or the various nights of Eid, uh, is to come back to Allah is to repent to Allah. You know, that is the whole purpose. You know, because on, on the normal, usually, or rather every night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a call, saying, is there anyone who will ask for forgiveness that I will forgive him? And various other calls. But these are made in the last third of the night. Whereas on these special nights, the calling starts from Maghrib and goes on until Fajr. So again, the purpose of this is that we return to Allah, that we make Tawbah. You know, so the question is, what is Tawbah? And how do you make Tawbah? You know, it's like I say to somebody, make Salat. Well, if he doesn't know how to make Salat, then I really haven't helped him. So the same thing here. So if we look at the verses in the Qur'an that deal with tawbah, that deal with forgiveness, you know, there are many verses, uh, and at the end of many verses, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about how merciful and forgiving He is. But certain specific verses, you know, and we'll start with verse number 53 of Surah Zumar, which is Surah number 39, uh, which according to many scholars, is the verse that gives most of us the most hope. And the verse starts off with قُلْ قُلْ in Arabic is a command. You know, saying say. قُلْ comes in the Quran 332 times. And this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the Quran is a conversation between Allah and His Beloved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving a command to his beloved that, oh my beloved, say this to them. So everything after Qul becomes the saying of Rasulullah as ordered by Allah. So whatever comes after Qul, you know, if, if the word is he, then Rasulullah Sallallahu is referring to Allah. If Rasulullah Sallallahu after Qul now is ordered to say me or my, it's referring to him, self. You know, a simple example of this is Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say, he, huwa, 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 he is Allah the one. It doesn't, you know, Qul doesn't mean tell them that I am Allah the one. It doesn't say that. It says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. So again, Qul occurs in the Quran 332 times. And so this is one of those verses which starts off with Qul. It says, Qul ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Inna Allah yaghfinu al-dhuluma jamia. Innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands his beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, O oh my slaves, O oh my servants, whose servants? The servants of Rasulullah. Because this is now Rasulullah so I'm saying this because everything now is after Qul. Which is also very interesting because you find some translators where they translate Qul 331 times exactly as it should be. And then when it comes to this verse because it doesn't fit their agenda, they say, tell them, tell, they'll translate it as, tell my slaves. Which is not what it says. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is having Rasulullah Sussam address his lovers as his servants. As the servants of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is, this is who Tawbah is for. I mean, Tawbah, every sinner should, should make Tawbah, should repent. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't allow every sinner to repent. Here he defines for whom, who he will allow to repent. Those who acknowledge themselves as the servants of Rasulullah, who humble themselves before the messenger, peace be upon him. I mean, if we think of the, about, you know, the story of, repentance. The first story in the Quran, you know, as far as where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is narrating an incident, as far as the way that we read the Quran, is the story of whom? The story of Adam alayhi salam. And what is the story of Adam alayhi salam except the story of repentance and forgiveness? And this is important to, under, to note, and we're going to come back to this as we talk about this. So it's, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi is addressing his servants, O oh my servants, who have wronged their own selves. Which gives us the other criteria for Tawbah. That you have to acknowledge that you've done something wrong. You have to be able to acknowledge that you have done something wrong. wrong. That you have wronged yourself. You know, for those who acknowledge themselves and humble themselves before the Messenger. And acknowledge that they have done something wrong. Then do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Which also emphasizes the point here. That if Ya Ibad, O oh my servants, was Allah, then He would say, Do not despair of my mercy. But He doesn't say that. The verse doesn't say that. It says, Do not despair of the mercy of Allah. That He is able to forgive everything along, as long as these criteria are met. He is willing to forgive everything. Innahu huwal ghafoorur rahim. And indeed he is merciful and forgiving. 
or rather forgiving and merciful. So this tells us various aspects of tawbah, for whom it's for, who qualifies to, to, for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow him to even make tawbah. And the first criteria, which is you acknowledge that you've made a mistake. And after you have made tawbah, and you've met the requirements, then you have full confidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted it. No doubt in his acceptance of it. But the other aspects of tawbah, Now, if I look at the story of, again, Adam alayhi salam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the angels, and within this command is included Iblis, he says, And when I blow my soul into him, then you fall into prostration before him. Allah is free from soul and body. So what is this soul? It is the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed in Adam al-Islam to be sent down through the generations. To be passed on until it manifests itself as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What happens? The order comes. All of the angels fall into prostration. And what does Iblis do? He says, no. Arrogance. He had no problem humbling himself before his Lord. He made sajda to his Lord to the extent that there's no place on the earth left that he did not make sajda to Allah. And yet now when the command comes to honor yourself before the messenger, and if you don't, if someone says, no, it's not the messenger, then it's at least a prophet. Even though in reality it is the prophet. So now the, when that command comes, no. Arrogance. You know, when we read Surah Munafiqun, Surah number 63. You know, Allah subhanahu wa in that Surah, He mentions the actions of Abdullah ibn Ubay. When He when they accused the wife of Rasulullah of some indecency, Bibi Aisha Siddiqa, radiallahu anha. And then afterwards, you know, they are called to come and ask for forgiveness. But how are they called? The verse says, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْ يَسْتَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And when it is said to them, come, so that the Messenger of Allah may ask for your forgiveness. You see them turning their head and then turning away in arrogance. And, it's, oh. and then they turn away. Because when Abdullah ibn Ubay, you know, who is the one who instigated this accusation, ac accusation against the wife, Bibi Aisha Siddiqah, radiallahu anha, when, he, when they came to him and they said, come, let the messenger, come to the messenger and ask, for, so that he may ask for Allah's forgiveness. What did he say? He turned his, he did exactly as Allah subhanahu wa described, that he turned his head, or moved his head and he turned away in arrogance. And he said to them, he said that I have accepted Islam because of him. I believe in Allah because of him. And I give zakat because of him. Does he now expect that I should come and bow before him? This is his arrogance. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also answers the very next verse. وَسَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَسْتَغْفَرْتَ لَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تَسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ لَنْ يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَحْنِ الْقَوْمِ الْفَاسِقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it is the same for them. Whether you ask forgiveness for them or you don't ask forgiveness for them. Allah will never forgive them. And Allah does not guide those who are fasiq or those who have transgressed. <coughs> you 
And an interesting thing is there are those who try to take this verse and say, Ah, oh, see, doesn't matter, Rasulullah he can't do anything for you. Which is exactly the opposite of what it means. This is showing the love between Allah and His Habib, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent His Habib, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Rahmatul Alameen. So He made dua for everybody, including Abu Jahl, including Abdullah ibn Ubay. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that because of their attitude towards you, it makes no difference. If they had humbled themselves before the messenger, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have accepted their forgiveness, or accepted their repentance and forgiven them. The other verse that deals with this, and again, there are many verses, I'm just only picking a few. All of them are connected. Verse number 64 of Surah Nisa, Surah number 4. Which starts off with, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولَ إِلَّا لِيُطَعَ بِذْنِ اللَّهِ Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have not sent a messenger except that he should be obeyed by the will of Allah. Meaning that is Allah's will that what whoever whichever messenger he sent, they should be obeyed. Period. But then he says something interesting. You know, and everything is connected. So, you know, because you think, okay, this is okay, so I should obey him, so I should simply do whatever he says. But the next part of the verse says, What should he be obeyed? What does it mean to obey the messenger? وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا لَهُمْ الرَّسُولَ لَوَجِدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابَ الرَّحِيمَ And if when they had wronged their own souls or their own nafs or their own selves they had come to you جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهِ and ask for Allah's forgiveness if they had come to you, O my beloved and ask for Allah's forgiveness. Rasul. And if the messenger had asked for their forgiveness, so they have to ask for forgiveness after coming to the messenger. And then the messenger asks for their forgiveness. So they humble themselves by coming to the messenger. The messenger and they ask for Allah's forgiveness, and the messenger asks for their forgiveness. Then and only then would they find Allah forgiving and merciful. Then and only then would they find Allah forgiving and merciful. Then they would find Allah forgiving and merciful. The criteria is given before if you want Allah to be forgiving and merciful. That you come to the messenger Humble yourself, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ask for Allah's forgiveness, and then He asks for your forgiveness. But the interesting here again, the wording is very interesting because you know people. There are people who say, "Oh, this only applies for then." But even if I if I don't know anything else, and all I look at is the wording of the, of the verse. Walau annahum idhalamu amfusahum. If when they had wronged their own self, ja'uka, and they had come to you, fastaghfirullah, and ask for Allah's forgiveness, wastaghfirullahumur rasul, and the messenger had asked for their forgiveness. It doesn't say, and you had asked for their forgiveness. Because if it said you, then somebody could say, oh, it's only for then. But Allah subhanahu says, no, and the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa had asked for their forgiveness. So the verse is applicable so long as he is the messenger. So who was the messenger then? Rasulullah sallallahu Who was the messenger yesterday? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who is the messenger today? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And who is the messenger tomorrow and forever? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the verse applies, has no time limit on it. The time limit on the verse is so long as he is the messenger. And he is always the messenger. 
The kalma today is the same as the kalma yesterday, is the same as kalma will be tomorrow. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad Rasulullah, Muhammad is the messenger. Not was or will be, but he is, period. When I look at this verse, if you look at the tafasir of this verse, and it doesn't matter, you know, any of the classic tafasir, whether it's Tabari, uh, Razi, even Ibn Kathir, Nasafi, all of them. When they talk about this verse, all of them include at least one of two incidences, if, and some of them both. One is, there was a scholar named Utabi. He was known as Utabi, his actual name was Utabi bin Safwan. He says that he was there at the Rauda of Rasulullah. He was sitting at the Rauda of Rasulullah and this Bedouin comes. And he comes to the grave of Rasulullah and he says, he says, Ya Rasulullah, addressing the messenger. He says, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us in the Quran. And then he recites this. That if when they had wronged their own souls, they had come to, to you and asked for Allah's forgiveness and the rest of the verse, and you had asked for their forgiveness, or, or the messenger had asked for their forgiveness, then they would find Allah forgiving and merciful. So he recites this, and he says, he says that I have wronged myself. And I have come to you for forgiveness and for intercession. And then he recites some couplets in Arabic where, it, where the basic translation is that, Oh, the most exalted among those who are in their graves or who have been buried. The one who, who increased the worth of the plains and the hills. That may I sacrifice my life for this grave which is made radiant by you. Oh, the one of forgiveness and mercy. And then he leaves. And Utabi, he says that he fell asleep, sitting there, and Rasulullah comes to him in, in the dream, and he says to him, he says, go and tell that Bedouin, that Baddu, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven him. There are people who say, oh, you know, this is just, you know, this... This person, Utabi, he has no validity. You know, Utabi is one of the contemporaries of Imam Bukhari. And they exchanged hadith with each other. So this is an incident that took place at least 200 years after Rasulullah. <laughs> but even if I acknowledge, okay, if I accept their arguments against Utabi, now I have to explain the other one. As I said, there were two, and actually there are more. But these two are in, you know, you find them in all of the classic hadiths. I mean, classic tafasir. The narrator is Sayyidina Ali. Karamullah And he says, three days after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi was buried, he was there at the road of Rasulullah Sallallahu And this villager, this Baddu, he comes. You know, he had set out from wherever he was before things happened. And then when he arrives, he finds out that Rasulullah has passed and they have buried him. So he comes to the road of Rasulullah and he falls at the feet of Rasulullah And he takes some of the dust there and he places it upon himself. And he says, Ya Rasulullah You commanded us and we hear. You know, Samana wa ta'ana. We hear and we obey. You commanded us and we hear. And Allah commanded you. And you told us. And amongst those commands is 
walau annahum idhalamu anfusahum again reciting the verse jauka that if when they had wronged their own selves they had come to you oh my beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam and ask for allah's forgiveness and you had asked for their forgiveness then they would find allah forgiving or rather the messenger asked for their forgiveness you would find allah forgiving and merciful And then he says, he says, Ya Rasulullah, so I have wronged, I have truly wronged my own self. And I have come seeking Allah's forgiveness. And Ali Radhiwa says that he was sitting, he was there. And he says, and we heard Rasulullah. And he says to him, he says, he says to the Badu, go because Allah has forgiven you. You know, even the verse in Surah Ali Imran, where, Allah subhan, where, where the companions, they ask Rasulullah Sallam, Ya Rasulullah Sallam, how can we love Allah? And how can we have our sins forgiven? Qul, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni yuhbibkum Allah, wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum, wallahu ghafuru rahim. O oh my beloved, Sallallahu say, say to them, if you wish to love Allah, or if you should love Allah, fattabi'uni, do my ittaba. It doesn't say do my ata. You know, a lot of, unfortunately, translation loses a lot. Because both of these words get translated as obey me, or follow me. Ata is follow. You know, I follow somebody or obey somebody, whether I want to or like him or don't like him. This is ata. Ittaba is that I love him first and that love drives me to follow him. So do my ata. Do my ittaba. Love me and, and, and make that love the driving force for you to follow me. Allah will love you. You know, you wanted to be the lover. Problem being the lover is maybe the one you love doesn't love you back. And for a true lover, that's worse than death. And here Allah SWT says, Allah will be your lover. If you love Rasulullah and, and that love drives you to follow him, Allah will love you. And he will forgive you, forgive your sins. And Allah is forgiving and merciful. Uh, many other things that can be said. Uh, inshallah, I'll end here today. Uh, my brother will make first Adan and then we'll make Sunnah and then the rest of the schedule will stay the same until time shifts enough. Uh, but may Allah <coughs> truly fill our hearts with his true love and the true love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family, his companions, and all of those whom they love, inshallah. So, inshallah, brother, we'll give you a